welcome to another episode of IIC's Beyond and ITK. Today we have with us the president of IIC for the year 2017-2018, Ritesh. He has completed his master's in electrical engineering from Arizona State University and will soon join Texas Instruments as an analog design engineer. Uh, we are very happy to have you with us today, Mr. Ritesh Vaikole. How are you? Hi, uh, I'm good, Anit. How are you? I'm good. How's um how's everything going with that? It's going well. Uh, well for the situation at least. Okay. I thought we can start off today with just a bit about yourself. Yeah. Uh, so hi everybody. Uh, my name is Ritesh Vaikole. Uh, I was a member of IST for three years uh, in my college days, and uh, I think the last and it said earlier I was the president from seventeen to eighteen. And uh, I completed my bachelor's at NITK in ECE in 2018. And uh, right after that, uh, I came to do my master's in the US in electrical engineering. And uh, I graduated this year in 2020 and I started working in Texas Instruments right now. How is your work experience so far at Texas Instruments? Uh, my experience has been really good. Uh, I interned in Texas Instruments last year as well. And uh, I really like the culture that they have and uh, the opportunity that they provide. And obviously, it relates perfectly to what I have been studying for the last six years. So it doesn't make it any worse. Moving on to your college, how was your uh, experience at Arizona State University? Uh, my experience has been great. So I cannot compare it to an experience from NITK because mainly because it was a different degree program. Uh, life is different when you're doing a bachelor's program and it's different when you're doing master's. And uh, master's is, I think, more focused towards studying, not uh, learning more things. And uh, it's been great. Like, if anybody wants to go for master's, I would say go for it. So, no, no, no stopping you there. What motivated you to pursue, pursue an MS in electrical engineering? So uh, I've been interested in technical aspects of a lot of things since the start. Uh, I used to be interested in almost about anything, like people around me would uh, see me making RC planes or something like that. And uh, I was a, a student of ECE in undergrad, and uh, it was really interesting for me, and I liked all the technical work that I got to do in IST. In the three years that I was there, I got to build stuff from scratch. I got to mentor people to build stuff and uh, didn't really have anything of great impact. But then, I mean, you mean uh, what counts is, you know, the motivation that you get and skills that you learn. So, I mean, uh, bachelor's only gets you so far in anything. Uh, nobody in bachelor's will agree with me on that. They will be like, uh, you know, I'm studying a lot. I have eight subjects every semester. and it's a lot to study. I can't handle it. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's part of the problem. If you have eight subjects a semester, you can never really focus on one, <coughs> right? And uh, so, I mean, you get into fields that require more expertise, you know, master's was necessary. And I mean, that's what motivated me to come here and do my master's, grab the best opportunity available. How did you... Prepare yourself in college to pursue an MS in EE. Uh, it's, uh, so if you talk about the degree itself, you need to have this mindset that I'm going to do this my whole life. You do not need to uh, you know, be like, okay, now four years are done, I can forget 90% of my subjects, uh, which you usually end up doing. But uh, if, I mean, you look at it that way. And uh, from the aspect of coming to master's, you have to give, uh, a bunch of exams, prepare your profile. So I think everybody knows that uh, to come here, you need to give the GRE and the TOEFL. So I think you need to prepare for, for at least a few months for both of those exams if you want to, you know, do well and, uh, you know, crack the college that you want. So, yeah. Then you need to, I guess, yeah, build up your profile. That, that's part of a process that starts all the way from second or third year. While you were preparing yourself for this uh, field, the feet in college, you took up both a research and an in-office internship. Do you think when applying for a master's that one outweighs the other? 
I would say that the whole idea of something that is researched and uh, in office doesn't really separate anywhere. It, it's sort of a continuous blend into each other. If you say you're doing a research internship, it usually involves you doing something that uh, that is uh, trying something new, trying something new for the first time. And like a corporate internship or a corporate role would be something which has monetary results immediately. Let's say you're researching something that would be used by somebody else to build a product. So the first part would be research. The second would be, you know, like a corporate internship, which, you know, is oriented at the end of the day to make money. What is the application process like for an MS, specifically in your field? In my field, so first things first, you need to have a relevant uh, a bachelor's degree or a bachelor's program that would be electrical engineering or EC to be specific. Uh, here they just call it electrical engineering as a whole field. So you need to have some relevant subjects at the least, <clears throat> probably some relevant experience if possible. And you would need to give the GRE, the TOEFL, get some uh, perspective into, uh, you know, how to fill out the SOPs and uh, all the application forms, because I think that's one of the biggest hurdles that anybody faces. You have to fill pages and pages of information about yourself and you're like, I never knew myself this much. So yeah, I mean, that's the material you need. And then eventually the three most important or rather the hardest things to get are like three recommendations. You need to uh, either get them from professors or managers that you've worked under. They need to be in a position to recommend you. Uh, they usually have requirements on uh, professors being there because uh, professors carry more weight usually than, uh, than somebody else. Uh, then you put that all together into one form when you apply and you hope for the best. Now, for those who are looking into pursuing an, uh, an, an MS in EE, which all colleges would you suggest that they look into? Mm, MS in EE is a very wide branch. Not anybody, not, not like people don't really know it outside of EE. But you have, like once you come to a level of MS, you have multiple fields that go into uh, electrical engineering. So I won't be able to recommend for each of those. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I am aware of colleges that are good for VLSI, which is usually circuit design. And pretty much if you take out any college out of the top 10 lists for best electrical, turn out to be good for that. And beyond that, uh, there are a lot of colleges, including mine, Arizona State University, which in the US is extremely popular for uh, circuit design. It's called mixed signal circuit design. Uh, you can also look at uh, UCLA or, or pretty much any of the UCs. If you go on the east side of US, you could look at Georgia Tech. I don't know, like it, it's not that, you know, the one college is good, one isn't. It turns out to be that maybe 40-50% of them usually are. It is difficult to narrow down how to recommend somebody with a name. Uh, while you were in college, you were part of graduate service and a grad teaching assistant. So what are the qualifications that are required in order to become one in a college of choice abroad? Uh, first thing, you need to be good at the subject that you're going to be working for. So these professions usually end up uh, working part of a professor's job, but as a graduate student. So if you're a teaching assistant, you end up teaching or you end up mentoring like an entire class of students for a part of the course uh, and uh, that requires you to know the course first things first then uh, to stand out of the crowd you need to like complete the course and score like an a or an a plus or you, you need to be one of the best students in the previous years of the classes and uh, if if you meet these minimum requirements then uh, second thing it's it's mostly about you know social not rather socializing but you know professionally contacting your uh, professors and uh, people in charge and uh, that that usually works out for uh, teaching assistant work 
uh, roles. You can also be a research student and uh, get a, a role in teaching that way. And uh, that helps the university, uh, I don't know, save on costs and help you learn as well. What are some of the upcoming things students should look out for in your field? Upcoming? I mean, the entire world is changed right now by semiconductors. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's a field that's constantly evolving. And uh, you keep hearing about the uh, entire doing something great about the next big thing or quantum. I think quantum computing might be the big thing on the uh, side of electrical engineering, but still it's quite far, not as close as people think. I think most of the innovation right now is going into 5G. It's like a buzzword that's that doesn't have a meaning by itself, but yeah, it's the next big thing. Now everything's changing to uh, digital perspective and uh, you know, semiconductors are required. So if you're if you're interested, go all in. Like, don't worry about what you're gonna get at the end of it. You mentioned that the world is constantly changing. So, what revolutionary impact do you think COVID nineteen would have in your field? Um, as a field, I really like that. Uh, you know semiconductors and software these two fields go together they usually don't get affected because uh now that you're working from home you need computers you need devices you need more and more uh, uh equipment at home so it's 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 gonna improve the field i can say not the best thing to you know happen but uh it's not going to affect it negatively. It's it's looking like a positive outcome right now. But uh, I mean, COVID-19 has not had a severe impact on it. But uh, besides that, uh, I think I think it's positive trend upwards in the future. Finally, to close this session, do you have any general advice for those who are looking into an MS? Mm, so if you're looking for MS into something, uh, in engineering, uh, I would say do enough research to know where you're going, where you will end up, or rather where you want to end up, and see if that's taking you there. Uh, I think MS is usually a step that people take to get a better opportunity uh, and uh, upgrade your role probably. And uh, with role definitely comes, uh, I mean, more responsibility. So it's it's not really a big step as you think it would be because two years go by really fast. And if you really like something, focus on it and uh, don't, don't think that it's going to, you know, be a long journey or it's going to be hard work, late nights or no weekends. It's It's eventually, you know, about what you get out of it rather than how you get through it. It's, it's a good experience. Definitely go for it if you're interested. Thank you so much, Rishdeh and Rish. Have a good day. That brings us to the end of our interview, guys. If you found this helpful, do hit the like button below. And don't forget to share and subscribe to find out about more opportunities beyond the 90K.